this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make two completely different necklaces with the same type of pendant. So we are going to start with this necklace and then we'll move into this one. This is a beading chain necklace and this is a strong necklace. And I hope you stick around. These are using the treasure bag. Um, spring palette treasure bag. However, you can do these techniques with any beads and pendants you have on hand. So do not feel left out. Just get into your stash, find something similar, and let's go for it. For this necklace, I will be using some of the things found in the spring palette treasure bag. However, you can do this with stuff that is in your stash. Just use something similar and I'll give you a few um, ideas as we do this too. So what we're going to be using is the turquoise colored pendant, the teardrop pendant that is in the bag. I have these on my website. I have them in several different colors. So if you'd like one, you can get one. Then we're going to be using the 10 millimeter polyhedron beads, the blue ones that are in your little mix in your treasure bag. And I do have some of these mixes left over so I can post those. And um, if you want to get a mix, you can. Otherwise, just use like an eight by six rondelle or a 10 millimeter round crystal, um, whatever you can find that is a sizable crystal that will work for this particular project. Then we're going to be using, you have a strand of these little teardrops. I believe these are like six by four and um, we're going to be using pretty much the whole strand of the little teardrops. You could use a bicone crystal, probably a four millimeter bicone crystal will work fine for this. Or you could use a cuboid or a four by four by four cuboid, or you could use a um, fire polish bead that would work fine too. Then a four millimeter fire polish bead round. They're basically the same shape as a cuboid. Then I'm going to be using some seed beads and I'm using the Galvanized Permanent Finish Starlight in 8O and 11O for this project. I'm also going to be using two size two crimp tubes, a five millimeter jump ring, and I'm going to be using a toggle clasp. I also have these on the website if you want them. Or you could use a lobster claw or use anything you'd like. The ones in this particular bag are large and <clears throat> this is a dainty necklace. So I'm going to use this one. Then you're going to need some bead stringing wire. This is soft flex. It is size medium and I will show you the package here. It has this big old huge thing on it, but the diameter is 0 0.19 inch or 0.48 millimeters and it's soft flex medium. So anything around that size should work fine. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Okay, to start this project, you're going to want to cut about 24 inches of beading wire. Now I'm making an 18 inch necklace. Normally I would cut 22 inches because I like to have two inches extra on either side. But because this is going to take more wire to make the focal area the way I'm going to do it, I have cut um, a couple inches more. Now, if you want to make a longer necklace than 18 inches, you're going to want to cut 26 to 28 inches of wire, depending upon how many inches you want to make your necklace. And you'll just bead it extra on the top. But having said that, we are now going to prepare our pendant and then we will start um, doing our beading and you can see as you watch, you can kind of judge how long of a necklace you want to make and how much wire you want to cut. Now, the first thing we're going to do is put our jump ring onto the pendant because the pendant has a flat loop. And you can see it lays kind of flat against my beading mat. And we need to have a loop that is vertical like this to lay properly on our beading wire. So we're going to add a jump ring for that. I picked up my jump ring and I have my opening right here. I have my plier on one side. I'm going to pick up another plier, cover the other half and just twist it open like this. Then I'm just going to drop it on my pendant. And then 
I'm just going to close it the same way I opened it. Of course, opposite, but just twist it back. Make sure it's shut very fleshly. You don't want it to fall off of your beading wire, so make sure it's on there nicely. And then we're going to grab our beading wire and we're just going to go through the beading wire with the pendant and somewhat center it. At this point it doesn't really matter, just kind of put it in the middle of your wire. And then we're going to pick up on either side an 80 seed bead. I don't jiggle it around too much because you want those 80 seed beads to stay on either side of that jump ring and it can slip over them. So try not to do that. Then we're going to pick up two 11 O's on either side of the 8 O's. So I picked up two 11 O's and I've dropped them down. And then I am going to pick up two more 11 O's. Let me get you in here a little bit more. Yeah, maybe not. There we go. So I'm going to pick up two more 11 O's onto the other side. And my left hand is basically useless, so let me actually switch hands here and pick up two 11 O's. Okay. So now you want to make sure those two 8 O's stay on either side of your jump ring and you want to draw them down next to the pendant like this. Just like this. And then I'm going to back off again and I'm going to pick up two of my teardrop beads and I'm going to pick it up from the broad side so it's got a broad side and a narrow side because it's teardrop shape. I'm going to pick up them from the broad side and drop them down. And on both sides of the wire here. Now I am going to grab my wire and I'm going to put the two ends together and I'm just going to draw this all to the center. So by putting your two ends together like this, you can bring everything centered and then keep your two ends together, just like this, and you're going to grab one of your bigger beads. I'm using a 10 millimeter polyhedron. You could use a round bead, you could use a big 12 millimeter round pearl, whatever you want, and a round crystal, a big bicone, something like that. And then we're just going to draw that down on both wires, all the way down to our pendant or our seed beads, whatever, our teardrop beads, all of that. So what I've done is draw it together. Make sure that those seed beads and everything draws in tight, just like that. I'm trying to keep my jump ring between those two seed beads here. There we go. Draw this down a little tighter. I'm going to split my wires and pull on either side so I can get this down. And then, just kind of keep that like that. And then I am going to pick up, split these apart, or actually put them back together. We're going to pick up an 8 seed bead just to balance this out a little. And we're going to pick up a seed bead on both of these wires. So it can be tricky because the wires want to spread apart. You get both of the wires together put an 8 seed bead on there and draw it down. Just like that. Now, split your wires apart. Make sure everything in your focal area stays together nice. Just like that. And then, we are going to start to string the top here. So we're going to start with a narrow bead so that this area will actually stay together nicely. If you put a real wide bead, you're, you're going to have excess wire showing. So we're going to start with two 11 O's on either side. So just drop two 11 O's down. And then on the other side, 
I'm also going to drop two 11 O's down. I'm gonna split my wires apart and just kind of push those down. They're not gonna stay perfect when we, after we've done our beading and we crimp this off, we'll crimp one side at a time to make sure that we get them pushed down and spread apart nicely. Now, I'm going to just start beading the length of my beading wire here. And I am just going to use 80 seed beads and the teardrop beads. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm first going to pick up a teardrop bead and I'm going to go with the narrow side down this time. So I'm going to put it on the narrow side down. And you can do it however you like, but I would like to have mine starting with the narrow side down on either side. Push that all down, and then I'm going to pick up an 80 seed bead. Come here, are you? On either side. And then I'm going to have my teardrop facing the other way. So this time I'm going to pick up my teardrop on the broad side of the teardrop and drop it down, just like that. Bring them down to the center here. Make sure your 11 O seed beads kind of push down. They're gonna keep popping up. You can split your wire and you can just keep working with it, but it, they're gonna keep popping up until we crimp. Now we're going to put another 8 O seed bead on either side. And then we're going to grab another polyhedron and since we have three of them in our package, we're going to use three. Now, if you're using something else and you want to use more in your design, that will work fine too, something bigger. But I am just going to use the three, and then the rest of my beading is going to be my teardrops. And so I'm going to pick up an 8 on this side, and then an 8 on this side of the polyhedron beads. <clears throat> push it all back down together. And then I'm going to start doing my beading. So I'm going to drop it on my teardrops. I'm going to drop it on um, the narrow side first, and then an 8 and then the broad side. And then I'm just going to continue doing this 8 teardrop on the narrow side, and then teardrop on the broad side, and then an 8 and that's the way I'm going to continue doing that. I'll do one side completely, and then I'll do the other side. You can keep just working on both sides if you'd like, or you can do one side at a time, however you want to do that. So I'm going to drop down my narrow side now, and then an 8 and then the broad side. And I'll just keep working until I get pretty close to the end here, and then I'll count how many I have. But I'm gonna do that on both sides, and we'll be back when I have that strung, and I'll let you know what I've done. Okay, so as you can see, I've strung both sides. And what I've ended up from the polyhedron bead up, I have put on 23 of the teardrop beads with an 8 seed bead in between each one, of course. So this is measuring to be right about nine inches from here to here. So I know once I put my clasping on, I'm going to have around an 18, 19 inch necklace. So now I am going to, and we'll measure it afterwards to, so you can see exactly. Now I have clipped off one side so that as I work with the other side, my beads won't fall off. So I'm clipping it off and I'm just going to move it out of my way. And then I'm going to work with this side. The main thing here is at this point, when we do this, we're going to push these 11 O seed beads down flush to the polyhedron bead. Make sure that your centerpiece looks the way you want it, push it all the way down tight, and then we will do the clasping end. <clears throat> so be aware of what's going on with those 11 O seed beads there. And don't worry about the other strand because once we get this one tightened off, then we can split them apart and we can get that side down all the way too. So now I am going to pick up a size two crimp bead. 
and I'm gonna slide it down on my wire. And you can see I have a couple inches left here to work with, which makes it easier to do your clasping. Now I'm going to go through the loop of the clasp and then I'm going to bring the excess back through this little crimp tube. And if you want to, you can slide through the first 802 because I ended on 80s. So I'll just go ahead and slide through that 80 seed bead. You don't have to, but if you can, it's always kind of good. And then um, we're going to hold on to, so this is my sliding end, this is my stable end. I'm going to hold on or maybe it's the other way around, yeah. So this is my stable side, I'm going to hold on to it and pull my sliding side. Push everything down before I get it to the size loop I want. Check down where those 11 0 seed beads are and make sure it's flush. And then once I have this like this, I can grab a hold and just pull my sliding end until I get the size loop that I want. You don't want a huge loop, but you don't want a really tight loop because you need your toggle to move. So right about here is good for me. I like this. So now I'm just going to look at my wire here and uncross it if it's crossed inside my tube bead. And then I'm going to grab my crimping tool and I am going to place it in the second divot, the one closest to the handle. Again, before you do this, check your beads down by your polyhedron bead and make sure they're where you want them to be. Flush against that bead and then squeeze. Now you can see, actually that did not crimp well, so let me do that again, squeeze. There we go. Now you can see that I have a little V fold in the middle of the crimp. And one side of my wire is encased in a little tube and the other side of my wire is encased in a little tube. Those little tubes are now going to rest against the crimp tool in the first divot closest to the tip. So we're going to place our crimp tube in there sideways and we're going to squeeze again, squeezing those two tubes together and now we have a nice crimp. And I can test it, make sure everything's good, and grab my little set of um, flush cutters. I'm going to pull on this wire and get real close and cut that wire down. And now I have my end. Now, back off a little bit here and grab this end. So now I'm going to take the clip off and I'm going to pull this wire out to the side just so that I can make sure that I pop those 11 0 seed beads down. So this side is pretty well flush. Now I'm going to pull it out like that, push those down, keep them in position, and you can see everything looks pretty good there. Now I'm going to try not to move it around much so that those move. I'm going to grab my crimp tube and put it on my wire, grab my clasp, and then I am going to clasp this side. So I'll go around into the crimp tube and that first 8 I can move these beads up so I can manipulate the wire in if I would like. Just try to keep everything stable at the bottom area here. And you can see I'm not moving anything down here. It's staying just as it was. And then once I get it in there, I can push my beads down, find the sliding side and the stable side. So here's the stable side. The reason we do this is so that your beads will stay down flush and they won't pull up as you pull this. So hold on to that stable side. Once you've got it pretty well pulled down, you can let go and continue to pull it. Look at your other loop and make about the same size loop on either side around your clasping. Okay. Now I have my wires in position. They're next to each other. They're not crossed. I'm going to push this down and pull it down one more time just to make sure I don't have any slack in my line. 
And then I'm going to grab my crimping tool. I'm going to place it on this crimp tube in the first divot. And then I'm going to squeeze. And now I can move around because things aren't going to go anywhere. Now you can see I have my little V fold there. I'm going to position sideways inside the crimp tool in the first divot and squeeze again. And now I have a nice crimp and I'm going to take this wire put my flush cutters very close to that 80, pull on this wire and cut. And I still didn't get a great, you know, every time I do that on camera, I do not get a close cut. I can do it all day long off camera and I get a nice close cut, but the minute I'm on camera, oh no, that can't work. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So now that I have vented, we are going to look and see what this necklace looks like. So let me back the camera off so you can actually see it and put it together here and it turned out really pretty. I like to do this center type of um, focal area with a lot of my pendants and I'm sure you've noticed that but it just works out really well. You can change it and make each one look different. It's basically the same technique but you can use it in so many different ways. These little teardrop beads really make it interesting. So let me get you close so you can see the focal area really nicely and you can see that my beads are flush Everything looks nice. I don't have any gaps and that's what that looks like. So it turned out really pretty. Now, you know, some of these pendants are a little bit bluer and some of them are a little bit more aqua. The first one that I started my design with was a little bit bluer and it went really well with these beads, but it, it actually goes fine. It, it, it looks fine. So anyway, that's what that looks like. Get it down here, show you one more time, and, whoops, see my belly there? Now, that's what this looks like, and that is how you make this necklace. Okay, for this necklace, we are going to be using some more things from the spring palette treasure bag. Again, this is a techniques video, so you do not have to have that bag. You can use the methods I use and use anything you have on hand to go ahead and make something similar. Now, most of all the stuff I have on my website, so if you want to make something like this, then you can shop there. So, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the long teardrop pendant that is pink in the treasure bag. I have a bunch of these pendants and I will list them on the website so if you want one that's fine. I do not have a bunch of these but we're going to be using this little pink flower that's in the treasure bag. You can use something else, some other little pendant, doesn't matter. Or you can use both the pendants the same. Then we're going to be using some crimp tube ends I have a video called Beading Chain 101 that shows you other ways to end your, your beading chain and you can watch that too to get other ideas. But this is what I'm going to use today. These are beading chain crimp ends and I'm going to use four of them in the gold color. Then I am going to be using a toggle clasp. I would rather use a lobster claw for this but for some reason I don't have any, so not in gold anyway. So I'm going to use a toggle and see how that works out. I may have to just shuffle around and find a lobster claw, but you can use a toggle or a lobster claw. I'm going to use about four jump rings. Um, two of them I have already put on my pendants, so and then I'll need two for the end, so about four. These are five millimeter jump rings. You can use a four millimeter also. That will work fine. I'm going to use some of the 4x3 pink rondelles that were in the treasure bag. You can use anything you want. You can use bicones, you can use 4 millimeter rounds, just something small and pretty to put it in between the beads 
that we're going to use to decorate with. And again, you can use rondelles like an 8x6 rondelle, whatever you want, some kind of bold um, bead. These are the barrel beads in your treasure bag. Now, I wrote that there was eight. There's only seven in there. I did that wrong. I picked up the one bag that had eight, made my list from it, and made my video from it, and everybody has been going, hey, I only have seven beads. <laughs> well, you really only have seven, and we're going to use six today. So, and then we're going to use two pieces of beading chain. This is 0 0.06 millimeter beading chain, and it's in the gold color, of course. And I've cut one piece 17 inches long and the other piece 19 inches long. And you will need, if you need a longer necklace, you will need to just increase both lengths by two inches. So instead of cutting a 19 and 17, you can cut a 19 and 21, something like that. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started on this project. Okay, so I also forgot to mention that you'll need some size one Beadalon crimp tubes. They're actually crimp beads. These are round, size one. These really help to stabilize your beads on beading chain. So um, they're really nice to have. You can use a beading, a crimp tube also if you would like. However, these work easier. The other ones are actually more stable. But if you watch Beading Chain 101, you will see all the different methods to do everything I'm doing in this necklace. So you can get options for design. Pick up your B longer piece of chain. So I have one cut 19 inches. This is the one I'm going to start with. And what I'm going to do is I am I have already put a jump ring on my pendant. I'm going to go ahead and drop it onto my beading chain through the jump ring. So just make sure that you open a jump ring and put it on the loop on your pendant. Drop it down, center it somewhat by putting the two ends together so that you can get a good baseline of where you want to be. And then <clears throat> we're just going to work with putting a few beads on here. So I'm going to pick up some of these four by three pink rondelles and I am going to drop them down on either side. Just like that. And then I think, I think I want like three of them on either side. So I'm going to put three. I am designing this one. So kind of bear with me, but, um, if you need to, you can stiffen, stiffen up your beading chain with a little bit of super glue on the ends. I'm not doing that. It's a little flexible, but these beads have big enough holes to where I'm doing okay. So I'm just going to put three on either side of my pretty little pendant there. And then I am going to put <clears throat> one of these barrel beads on. I actually think I'm going to use a couple 8 seed beads too. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to drop down a golden 8 seed bead. These are Toho Permanent Finish, Galvanized Permanent Finish Starlight. So I think I want to put a couple of those on. So I'm going to put one on either side of this barrel bead. And then I'm going to drop a barrel bead on either side here. And I'm not going to do a lot of beading on this chain simply because I want to see the chain. The chain is pretty. So um, we'll do this. And then let's see, did I want two more barrel beads? Probably. So I'm going to put an 8 on either side of the barrel beads. And then I will drop three more of my four by threes on either side too. I'm trying to do this quickly so you don't have to watch me picking up beads. How boring is that? But you know, um, 
really don't have any other way to get them on there. So I guess I'll just do it. And then I'm going to pick up three more of these little rondelles on this side. One, two, three. Come on. And I lost my bead. Oh my goodness. I guess I should stop worrying about being fast and just do it because that messes me all up. Actually, it makes me slower, but, you know, got to try. Come on, you. Get on there. Okay. Then I'm going to put another 8 -0. And then another 8 -0 on this side. Yeah, I like the way that looks. That It looks nice with the little golden 8 -0s. And then I guess I can get you a little closer so you can see the piece. And then I'm going to put another barrel bead on. These barrel beads are drilled weird. Mm. This one's a little off center. Well, I don't have a lot of choice. Well, maybe because I do have seven, so and I'm only using six, so I'll just grab a different one and then I'll search for my other one in a minute. So I'll put that on there. And then I will put this one on here. So that's the only one that I found that was drilled weird. And here's my replacement, so I'll get rid of that weird one. Yeah, okay. And then I will pick up an 80 seed bead on either side. Now, we're going to stabilize these beads by putting some little crimp beads on either side. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my ends together. Move all this stuff out of the way. I'm going to put my ends together. And I'm going to center this. Make sure it's well centered. There you have a lopsided necklace here. Spread it apart. I'm not going to spread it too far because I don't want to mess it up. Then I'm going to take a size one crimp to or crimp bead and I'm going to slide it on this chain. Without moving my center, I'm going to put these on either side. So you can see that as I work, I'm making sure I'm not disturbing my centering of my beadwork here. So I'm just holding on to this chain here so that I don't disturb it. And then I'm going to get these little beads on and gently drop them down without disturbing my centering. And then all I want to do is stabilize this. I don't want to tighten it. I don't want to make it stiff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a pair of chain nose pliers here and I am just going to push my beads slightly together and I am going to just squeeze that cramp bead. Now, I'm a little ways away. You can see I have some slack. I can push this side down now, and then I can do the same on this side. I'm not pushing my beads together tight. I'm just having them lay without any slack. If you push down and push these together, you're gonna to have a stiff necklace. You just want them to have no real slack and just squeeze it on there. That way you can see after I have stabilized them, of course I didn't get that one squeezed well, so let me recenter this. If you don't squeeze it tightly, it won't stay there nice. So you have to squeeze it tightly. Centered. This one, let me squeeze it again. And now you can see when I pick this up and move it around and get you in close, there is still some movement on my beads. 
So look, I have a little bit of slack here. Then I move it here, a little bit of slack. All this is doing is just creating a stop so that they stay in the middle. But it's not holding them tight and stiff. It's just a stop, just like that. So this is my first layer of my necklace. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my ends together. And I'm probably slightly off center, so I'm going to put my ends together. Let's see where I'm at here. Pulling my pendant. And then I'm just going to trim my ends so that they're exactly the same on both sides if I can find my flesh cutters, which seems to be completely nowhere in sight. So, let me find those and we'll continue. So now I'm just going to cut these flush, just like that. And then I am going to take a couple of my little crimp tube ends and we're just going to end this. So, I'm going to get you in close. Now you can use clamshells to do this with too, clamshell beading tips. Um, like I said, reference the beading chain 101 and you will find different ways to end your beading chain. This one is a little crimp tube and what I am going to do is I am going to pick up my beading chain and I don't have a very flush cut, so I'm going to flush cut that and then I'm going to put this little end right on the chain. Just like that. And then I'm going to grab my crimping plier and down towards the bottom of my crimping tube, I am going to position my crimp plier on that little tube and I'm gonna pull my chain back a little because this is hollow and I can see it coming out the other end. And then I'm going to squeeze. So, let me show you what I have and we'll get in closer. I'll do the other side in a little bit more detail for you. So, now that I've done my first crimp, this is what I have. Now, when you position on these crimp tubes, you always wanna make sure you're towards the bottom because if you're too far with your crimping um, tool towards the top. You'll squish the top of it and it won't work. Now we're going to put it back in the crimping tool in the first divot and crimp it. Just like this. Now I have a really nice little end. We're going to do this one more time with a little bit more detail. One of the ways you can do this instead of setting it on your chain first is you can put it into your crimping tool, which is kind of hard for me to pick up. So I put it, pick it up in the first divot, grab it with my finger and move it into the second divot. And then I just position it to where it is flush with the back, the flat side of my crimping tool like this. And then you can pick up your beading chain and slide it through. Slide it into the the um, crimp end as far as it'll go and then squeeze. Positioning like that helps because you're going to be towards the end of the crimp tube. You're not going to be up towards the top to where you can crush it. That, that just positions it perfectly for you. Once you have done the first crimp, then you're going to go towards the bottom of the crimp tube again put it in there to where the two little tubes you created are touching the tool in the first divot and squeeze again. And now I have a very nice little end. So now what I have, I will show you, I have my first strand and now I'm going to make my second strand that will go towards the inside. The inside strand, of course, has to be shorter than the outside strand, but it can't be so short that it won't go around your neck. So you have to make sure that your inside strand is at least 17 inches 
Um, if you're very small, it can be about 16, but you want to make sure it's at least 17. By the time I put on my crip ends and I put on my clasping, it's going to be a little bit longer, so it'd be closer to 18. But you, this is what's going to judge the length of your necklace. Your outside one can be any length. The inside one has to be big enough to go around your neck, period. That's what judges the length of this particular style of necklace. Otherwise, you'll strangle yourself trying to put it on. Now, we are going to bead this one basically the same way, I think. I'm going to go ahead and drop on my pendant. And then I am going to... I think we'll do the same thing. I think we'll do three of the four by three rondelles. And I think I'm going to do this off camera. So I'll go ahead and beat it and show you exactly what I have put on. I'm going to do it the same way that I did the bottom one and secure it with the crimping tubes. And I can show you how to do that, but, or the crimp beads. But let me go ahead and bead this and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is what I have done. Very simple. I've just put three rondelles on either side of the pendant, and then I put on an 8 the barrel bead, an 8 and then I have dropped on my size one round crimp beads. And now I am going to reposition here, and we are going to center these beads by putting the two ends of our chain together, straighten it out. Well, come here, you. Straighten it out nice and neat. Make sure your ends are together. And then position everything nicely. I think I'm actually going to open this up a little bit. And just make sure you stay centered. You can get off slightly because you can even it up by trimming the ends, but you don't want to have to trim a lot because then you're going to lose length, so you don't want to have to do that too much. Now, I'm going to get us in here close, and we are going to... We are going to crimp this. So, let me grab a little pair of my chain nose. I'm going to hold on to it, and I'm going to just squish that little crimp bead flat, just like that. And then straighten everything out again. Put my ends together and just straighten it out so I can see where I'm at. Push that one down. And then I'm going to squish this one too. And again, you don't want to have a whole bunch of tight tension on it. Just have them laying next to each other nicely and loosely like this. And then that just creates a stop. So when I move around, my beads still have some movement. But they're not going to slide off my chain. So, or slide up. Every time I put it on, I won't have to reorganize my beads because they have stops. Now, I'm going to go to the end here. I'm going to lay them out, go to the end, see how my ends look, see if I have to trim it a little bit. I actually kept that pretty darn centered, so I don't really need to trim. You can see my ends are pretty much the same. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the crimp bead thing again. At the end here, the crimp tube. So I'm just going to pick this up in my crimp pliers if I can. So pick it up in your first divot, and then just move it to your second. And this time I have it on the inside instead of the flat side, but it doesn't matter, just make sure it's flush. And then take your beading chain and put it inside. Some of these are a little open on the back, so you will slide through the back. If you do, just back off a little bit. If it's closed, then um, you can feel the beading chain hit the end of the crimp tube, and you know you're in there all the way. And then squeeze. 
and then of course put it in the first divot sideways and squeeze again. Nice little crimp. Then I'm going to do the other side off camera and then we're going to put this together with our clasp in a couple jump rings. Okay, so this is basically how this is going to look. It's pro this one's probably going to be a little bit higher up once I get my ends actually put onto the clasping, but this is the basic layout. Now, I have my ends together here. Here's my outside strand. Here's my inside strand. I have opened a jump ring. So you just position your player on either side, twist your jump ring open, and then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put my outside strand on my jump ring. So the little loop on your crimp tube, you're just going to drop on your jump ring. The outside first, and then you're going to pick up the inside strand and you're going to drop it on there. And then you're going to pick up your clasp and put it on. And then you're going to close your jump ring. Now you don't want to cross. Ah, oh, my jump ring broke in half. What about that? Okay, well, it's a good thing I did that now. Let's do this again. Let me open another jump ring. Wow. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to put on my outside first, then my inside loop, my inside strand loop, and jump it on, put, jump it on the jump ring. Boy, this is getting really entertaining, you guys. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's late at night. I should go to bed. Now I'm going to drop on the clasp right there, just like that. And then we're going to close the jump ring. Make sure I don't break it this time. So I'm just twisting it back until I feel that it's joined fleshly. Just like that. Now, you can see that I have my inside strand and my outside strand right next to each other. So when I put this on, it should position itself correctly. I'm going to do the same thing on this side so I'm going to pick up my jump ring and open it up. So I'm just grabbing it on one side of the opening, position my pliers, open it up. And this time I am going to put the inside strand on first. So let me find the inside and I'm going to drop it on. And then I'm going to drop on the outside strand. And then I'm going to drop on my clasp and reposition a little here and then I'm going to close it and now I'm going to hold it up yep it works really well so let me show you what I've got Let's see if I can actually reposition here and reposition my camera and show you what I've got so now when I pick this up my strands hang appropriately or properly or however you want to put it when I pick it up because I have them on the clasping correctly and so this is what this is going to look like on the neck and I'll straighten it out make it look really pretty and um, take a picture of it so you can see but basically that's how that's going to lay let me measure it. Let's see how long of a necklace we have. We're going to measure the inside strand. So we're going to place on our beadboard the pendant from, actually we can do it this way. Let's do it this way. Let's put, put the outside pendant on the zero here on the outside divot on your beadboard and lay it down and then I'm going to put this one on the outside and I can put once I get it untangled here I can put my inside strand on the second divot here 
So what I have now is, I'm gonna get in there. I have a 20 inch necklace. As you can see, let me back it off so you can see. So this is a 20 inch necklace. Of course, the inside strand is a little shorter, so it's going to fit, the inside strand is going to fit more like an 18 inch once you get it on. So that's what that looks like. And let me get this stuff out of the way. Give you one more little peek at both the necklaces we just made and we'll call it good. Okay, here they are. They both turned out really pretty and they both lay on the neck very nicely. This one really lays nice. It's a little long on the bottom one because I made it 20 inches on the outside and about 18 inches on the inside, so it's a little long, but over a sweater or um, something like that, it would look great. So. I am really happy with both of these and I hope that you like them both also and that you try it or something similar. See you later. Bye-bye.